Hello girls and boys story time again and you know who we have today somebody who wrote woof adventures by the sea and this is aparna kartikeyan she loves dogs and calls herself a dog mother tree hugger and storyteller she has written for newspapers and websites about culture and livelihoods books for so she has written like 9 rupees an hour about disappearing livelihoods of tamil nadu and for children kali wants to dance and cat's egg that's interesting she shares a home with her husband daughter lots of books and two very important guests who she will maybe show you her dogs puchu and shingmo over to you aparna All Thank yours. Thank you so much, uh, Kinara Ma'am, for the introduction. Hi, everybody. My name is Aparna Karthikeyan, as Kinara Ma'am told you, and I wrote this book called Wolf. Uh, this is a book I wrote about my best friends. Their names are Puchu and Shingmo. Puchu is the black and white over here, and Shingmo is the brown one over here. And I have a little teeny little surprise for you. We are going to meet. Puchu over here this is my first dog i got her when i was 43 and she was 3 months old she was born in a gutter in a um, in mumbai outside a mall that's where her mother had given birth to her and three of her brothers and sisters and you know what is special about her she was born without a tail and here is puppy number 2 this is the baby of the house her name is shingmo She was abandoned in the beach when she was a tiny little puppy in a cardboard box, and that's what you'll read when you read Wolf. Um, thank you, Puchu. Thank you, Shingo. And now I'm going to tell you the story 
of my dogs. So when I was 43 years old, 43, not younger than that, I made such a big fuss at home and I said, I absolutely must have dogs. And my family said, okay, fine, let's have them. So we shifted to a house where they allowed pets. And then I went up on Facebook of all things. And I was looking at pages where people, you know, give dogs for adoption. And there I found this picture of a very cute black and white dog without a tail. And I rang up that person and I said, can I adopt this dog? And she said, yes. And then we spoke about it and she spoke about the formalities. And she said, the dog has been through a lot in her little life. And she said, I'll come and drop her off tomorrow. The next day was Valentine's Day and she came home with a little heart-shaped mark on her body. She's got many heart-shaped marks on her body and a little lipstick mark from her foster mother. That's how Puchu came home. Shingmos was very dramatic. She was out on the beach. She was dropped off there as a puppy when she was very, very ill during the monsoon in Mumbai, which, as you know, can be really ferocious. And she lived there. She survived. She managed. And when she was eight months old, she fell dramatically ill. We had no choice but bring her home and take her to the doctor and look after her. We thought after two days, we'll drop her back on the beach. It's been more than two years. And now we're in the second city with the dogs. We drove down from Mumbai to Chennai over three days. We stopped one night in Belgaum, one night in Bangalore. And then we came to Chennai. And it was such an adventure, our first cross-country journey. And here we are in another city making new friends. So this book, Woof, as I said, is about Puchu and Shingmo and all their friends on the beach. Thanks to the dogs and all the morning walks we did, I met this wonderful pack. I'm sure all of you have seen stray dogs, right? They're the dogs that hang around by the tea shop. They're the dogs that are lying down on the pavement. They're the dogs which are sitting outside, you know, every shop uh, out there, uh, near uh, places of worship, outside schools, wherever there are people, there are dogs. Why are there dogs everywhere? Why are they there? That's because many of them have been abandoned and then they have babies. In India, we have millions and millions of stray dogs. There are a lot of problems because humans and stray dogs sometimes get into problems. But a lot of times there are people on the ground who are very kind to the dogs, tea shop owners, um, you know, people who sell things on the street. They give them shelter. They give them a little food. People with very little are so ready and willing to share their lives and homes with these dogs. I found such a big community in Bombay and many of their friends, you know, Kriya, Tim, Coconut, Big Head. I've written about all of them and Orange, yeah, Orange. I've written about all of them in this book. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about their life in Bombay, which is where this book is set. They used to play in this beach where there were hardly any people in the morning. The walkers used to come a little later after we went there. And it was absolutely magical. You know, there was just this wave, this little, the sun that was just coming up, a little bit of light. The whole world was like, you know, purple, blue, light, brown, gentle breeze. And then there were these exposed rocks because the coast of Bombay can be quite rocky and a long sea, you know, a seashell bed. It was absolutely beautiful. And that's where the dogs spent every morning, you know, looking up shells. Uh, they were looking at, um, uh, you know, corals, uh, all sorts of sea creatures. Um, sometimes we saw snakes. Sometimes they were dead. Sometimes they were alive. And of course, fishes and crows and all kinds of things. And of course, your friends. Um, can I just read out a little bit from the book for you about how their life is? This part of the story is told by Coconut, who is the beach elder. Now, you know, the dogs that lived outside speak many languages. Coconut also speaks many languages. Puchu and Shingo that you met, Puchu speaks four. That is Hindi, Marathi, English, and Tamil. And Shingo additionally knows Gujarati. She knows five languages. And when I say speak, I mean that they understand, they actually respond to words in these languages. Now, let me tell you what Coconut would have said, you know, had he been able to communicate with us. He's going to explain the dog's beach to you. Now, if you keep quiet for a little while, I'll tell you about the dog's beach. No, it's not a separate beach. We sit and sleep in the same one, but it's different, you understand? What do you mean you don't understand? Hmm, try this then. Go down on your knees and hands. Yes, on all fours. Now look at your house. Isn't everything taller? Isn't the ground closer? Can't you see what's on the floor better? That's how it is for us. Plus, our eyesight is so much sharper, really. 
and we can hear and smell really well. Do you know what someone's cooking four houses away? We do. We're clever like that. But because we're small and clever, we come in the way of people. And we're not very important or grand. Some dogs are grand, don't get me wrong. Um, but they generally have lots of fur and they're always very hot. They have to walk on leashes, poor things. And though they have get good meals, I hear come closer. I can't say this loudly. They get it too, she's white. I mean, the whole idea is to smell powerful there. But those chaps, they smell like flowers and baby powder. Disgusting. So people chase us away. They call us dirty. They tell their children we bite. But we don't, not normally. You know why? Because we'll be punished. We lose our only home. And this is our home. You're our guest. Would you like some tea? Thank God you said no. I have no money. Do you know what it is like to not have any money when there's so much you can buy and eat here? And then Coconut is going to describe the beach. There are stalls from every part of India. There is spicy food and sweet food and sour food and simple food. Do you like roast corn? You get the best ones here. Freshly roasted over coals. The sparks go zing, zing, zing. And from afar, it looks like a lot of insects flying for a second and then dying. There's charts, so many kinds. With dahi, without dahi, with potato, without potato. But the best ones with potato and dahi. Then there's pizza. It smells of cheese and people eat the middle and always leave the corners for us. I love chewing on those bits. Not now, of course. Now I can't chew anything. But when I was young, I hunted with discarded corners and buried them under the sea, sand to eat later. Only sometimes the sea would come rushing in and take them away. And I would weep thinking of the fish feasting on my hard work. There are cold rings of every color kept in tall bottles. Purple, orange, yellow, green, and ice cream and water. Water. They give you water if you give them money. I've seen it with my own eyes. It is a bottle and it has a cap and you bite it like this with your teeth and chew it and water comes into your mouth. It feels wonderful, especially when it's hot and you're thirsty. That's, that's when water is the only thing we want. It's the only thing we can't find. And can you see the irony of it? They live by the sea, but they cannot drink the sea water because it is so, so salty. What else happens when you're a dog which lives by the sea like all the dogs in Wolf do? Well, you go through a lot. When it's very hot, you suffer a little bit. When it's very cold and very wet, you do again. But the most important and difficult thing for the dogs is when it rains. And in Bombay, it rains for several months a year. Do you know what all my friends did when it rained? Let me read out just a tiny bit from that for you. This is from chapter four, A Wave So High. It rained and rained from a very black sky for two days. They had never seen such rain, the dogs said. They sat huddled in the little passages between the shops. Kriya had dragged coconut with her when she saw the waves swallow the beach. Baby Diane and fat brother had come with her too. All these are dogs on the beach. The dog sat quietly or slept in a heap. And every time it looked like it might stop raining, they ran out. But the rain came back fiercely, whipping their faces and backs, and they rushed back to the shelter. At least, Coconut said, the shops were dry. So is my mouth, said uh, fat brother. Coconut told him to lick some of the rainwater. Shingo, Coconut ordered. You come here and sit next to me. The oldest and youngest sat side by side, while Kriya and Big Head watched the waves anxiously. Do you think the water will come in? Orange asked when the next wave crashed on the steps. Do you think this roof will fall? Chocolate asked when the wind tore at the awning, shredding it and playing with strips of red and yellow. Will Damu come? Thin asked. Nobody answered, but everybody knew. People would not come to the beach, and even if they tried, the police would stop them. And the dogs were not going to get any food. By the third day, the dogs were exhausted. The cold, the wind, the rain, the hunger, all of it tormented them. They were scared and tired of sitting up and watching the drama. The furious rain, the angry waves, the boiling sea, the roaring wind, the trees that came crashing down, the water that took back like a trophy, everything that it could find. Rubbish bins, tires, a bicycle, half a coconut tree, three push carts, plastic bottles, glass bottles, dead animals. That's their life on the beach. Now tell me, why are these guys on the beach again? That's because they were abandoned by people and not enough people came forward to give them homes. Next time you have a choice between buying a dog and adopting a dog, 
Will you please think about going to a shelter and adopting a dog? That will be the best thing you can do. You can get rid of the stray dog menace if you think it's a menace. You can also give a wonderful dog a home. I always ask people this. We buy, you know, a fridge, we go for a brand. We go for a brand when we buy a television. Do we need a brand for a dog? We don't. All dogs love human beings, whether it's a retriever, a beagle, or a mongrel. They all love human beings and they're wonderful, friendly, and clever. I'm going to tell you something about dogs and why they're so special before I come back and tell you a little bit about Kuchu and Shingo. Why are dogs so special? Not just because they've been around human beings the longest, you know, among the domesticated animals. It's because there is the greatest size diversity in dogs. What is size diversity? You have dogs that are so small, like the chihuahuas, which I'm sure you've seen, which can travel in a handbag. And you have dogs that are as big as small donkeys. I'm sure you've seen those too. Really, really big regal dogs going for a walk, you know. So when dogs are this remarkable, how are they when they're born? Puppies are born blind, deaf, and toothless. So are they helpless all their lives? Not at all. They have superpowers. They can do things that you and I can only dream of. You know why? You and I, human beings in general, have 6 million olfactory receptors in our noses. That means we have 6 million things that help us smell things. You know how many dogs have? 200 to 300 million. That's right. Compared to dogs, we practically smell nothing. When we go into a lift and someone wearing a very strong perfume has just stepped out, we know hmm, somebody has been here who's been wearing this perfume. Dogs, they can tell you when a person has walked, you know, in a particular place, even when they've not seen them many hours later. They can smell when people are afraid. They can smell diseases like cancers and, you know, now Corona. They've been trained to do all this. Dogs just are brilliant. You know what's the other superpower? They can wag their tails. You and I can't do that. We don't have tails. But they can also wiggle and wag something, you know, move something that you and I have. Ears. Can you wiggle your ears? Not with your hands. Can you just wiggle them? Some people can wiggle them just a tiny bit. The dogs have 18 muscles in their ears. And they can move not just one, both together, and one up, one down, one sideways, one up. Uh, both sideways, they can do all kinds of odd, formation, odd formations with their ears and they can tell you what they're thinking and feeling with just the way they move their ears. Isn't that a gorgeous superpower to have? You know what else they can do really, really quickly? They can run. Greyhounds, one of the kind of dogs, can run fast as a car, 70 kilometers per hour, 45 miles per hour. That's the speed of a greyhound. A lot of Indian dogs, Indian dog breeds, hunting dog breeds can run very, very fast too. Now, they can locate the source of a sound in six by hundredth of a second. That's like, well, no, of course not. That's, that's very, very slow. Dogs can do that. You know what else? Just like how you and I have fingerprints which are super special, the dog paw print is super special. It is unique for the dog. And I think, you know, you should go and tell your friends this just to wow them. You know, Dalmatians are born without any spots. and Only after that, they get the 101. You must never give a dog a chocolate. And there are two very special dog breeds that you should know about. Basinjis, which do not bark. And the Chow Chow breed, which have a black tongue. Black tongue. That's right. And the last fact, all dog breeds love people equally they are just crazy about people all they want is the love and trust of a human being you know what my two dogs have taught me the most how to love and how to love unconditionally and how to be kind and caring you know when i'm feeling dull and lonely or tired the first thing puchu does is she comes and sits next to me and then she'll move her bum and she'll sit next to me like that and then i feel on top of the world it's like, you know, I need nothing else but just a dog for company on a day when I'm feeling a little sad. So I think if you can, get a dog. If you can't, volunteer at a shelter, play with a puppy that you know. Um, I always ask your parents before approaching a dog, don't approach a dog that looks aggressive or scary or, you know, is angry or afraid. Do not approach that. 
but go for dogs ask her if there is an owner with the dog ask if you can pet it and where you can touch it before you do i finish with this tiny little section that i want to read out that dogs which have a disability are in no way a problem you know there are some dogs which can't see some dogs which have one leg less than others um i met some dogs like that on the beach and so did puchu and shimo and you know they were just wonderful and they were able to do a lot of things here the shimo meeting two such dogs oh you too she barked to get their attention the two dogs slowed down turned to look at her then they came running and shimo was shocked one dog had only three legs the other dog had a broken paw oh she said awkwardly i'm sorry i didn't know that's okay the smaller one said my name is lola and i'm bilbo's new sister my leg was crushed in an accident and the vet had removed it and my name is louis and bob's brother an auto rickshaw ran over my leg he held up his front paw which dangled uselessly but they've let me keep it for now but she was it confused How can you run so fast with just three legs? Easily, Lola laughed. Come, race me! She leapt into the water neatly and started running. Shingo hesitated for a moment, then she ran. She ran as fast as she as she could until she heard her heart in her ears. She ran faster until she heard the dog whistling, the wind whistling, but she could not beat Lola. Come on, Lola shouted. You can do it. Don't give up, brown girl. My name is Shingo, and I give up. Shingo panted, slowed down, and stopped. You win, and that's how Shingo and Puchu lie down on the beach after they've had a good old romp. Uh, this book has some wonderful illustrations. Uh, um, you know, it's all things Bombay and all things dog. I hope you get to read the book, and I hope you get to enjoy it. Um, Do check it out sometime when you get a chance. This is Shingmo and her family going on a holiday. Um, yeah, I showed you that one. And here is the Shingmo's map of the beach. I leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed hearing about Wolf and all our lovely friends on the beach on in Bombay. But if you look around wherever you are, you'll find these dogs everywhere. so do keep an eye out for our best friends my best friends definitely and maybe yours too thank you so much for having me had a lovely fest bye thank you so much aparna that was so nice and i hope that sometimes someone can meet your uh, uchu and shingmo thank you kinara ma'am bye 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 can we have rohini chinta unmute please hello rohini welcome thank you now children you heard a dog story now you're going to listen to a science story rohini chinta teaches genetics and biotechnology at university college for women she is a science communicator she writes for children and is a professional storyteller and that is what she is going to do to you tell you a nice story now she uses storytelling to talk about science you know science can be made so interesting if people do it properly you know so she is going to do it to children as well as to adults that's what she does she uses stories to tell about science she has many awards and uh, she is also a winner of a storytelling contest you know it was an online storytelling contest logon ka folklore she won that very proud of you rohini she uh, she writes and in uh, english as well as in telugu and she loves narrating stories to children so rohini it's all yours I'll come back again when you finish your story. Thank you, and the floor is yours. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, thank you, HLF team, HLF, for the opportunity. Uh, science stories are uh, my way of sharing my passion for science uh, with audience of all age groups, and I couldn't have asked for a better platform than uh, HLF to 
share this passion of mine. Uh, hope you enjoy my story. Hi, welcome to Science Tales with Rohini. I wish you all a happy new year. And on this occasion, I would like to tell you a story about why trees are green. Do you see all the trees in the backdrop? They're all green and not black or blue or pink or red or any other color you choose. But do you know why they are green? They are green because they did not have an option to be anything else. They had to be green. And I will tell you why they had to be green and nothing else. This is a story of a very, very long time ago. So long ago that you can't even realize how long ago. It was a time when Earth was born. When Earth was born, it was a hot, gooey ball of gases and it had no life on it. It had lots of carbon dioxide and other gases, but no water, no land and no oxygen. But then, slowly, the Earth cooled down. Land was formed and then rain came down washed the land and filled all the gaps in between and thus oceans were born. Because the oceans were born out of rainwater washing the land, all the minerals on the land entered the water, all the chemicals on the land entered the water and the water became very salty and unhabitable. Nobody could live in that water. But then, miraculously, something happened. A single cell started living out of the water. It was miraculously born. Nobody knows how. And it started living on the ocean waters. Now it was a single cell and it was feeling very lonely. And the only other playmates it had were the sun and the water. Now it loved the sun more because the sun was more energetic, bubbly, bright and shining and it had seven colors in it. It had seven rainbow colors and among all the seven rainbow colors of the sun, the little first cell that was born loved green most. The blue, the red and the green came down to the water to play with the cell. But the cell was very partial to green and it would play with green always. So the red and the blue color left the cell. And when they were leaving the cell, red and blue mixed together and became purple. And the cell, because it left out the red and Blue colors, it appeared purple. It is called a purple colored bacterium and its name was Halobacterium halobium. We can call it Halo Halo just for the story. Now, this Halo Halo lived very happily. Green was a high energy color, it had lots of vibrant, exciting things hidden inside it, and Halo Halo played with the green color and became more and more energetic and it multiplied. It multiplied so much so that there were lots of little hello hellos born and floating on the surface of the ocean and all of them loved green color. They left out the red and blue color and they started appearing purple. Now, once the floor of the, once the uh, surface of the ocean was filled with all the children of Halo Halo, they were more born. Now, the more kids, the uh, uh, kids that were born later did not have place to play on the surface of the ocean. So, they slowly started sinking into the water and they started going deeper into the ocean. 
and they also loved sunlight but then the hello hello on top took away all the green the green always played with hello hello only red and blue colored colors remained for the children that were at the bottom of the ocean and these little cells took the red the red and the blue colors and they glowed green because when you leave out a color you appear that color they took the red and blue color and they left out green because they could not have green the green was taken by halo beam so they appeared green and halo left out red and blue so therefore it appeared purple now these little green cells lived very happily under the water and apart from just playing with red and blue colors of the sunlight they had one more special characteristic they could use the carbon dioxide that was there on the earth's surface to make food now they used red and blue light and how did they use the red and blue light they had one very special magical box inside them called chlorophyll this chlorophyll took up the blue and red light from the sun and helped them get energy now along with that energy they these green cells which were at the bottom of the ocean had one more special feature and they could use the carbon dioxide that was there in the atmosphere at that time and using the carbon dioxide and sunlight they prepared their own food and they gave out lots of oxygen they gave out the oxygen which is necessary for us to live and breathe and these cells also multiplied because they took energy from the sun and grew strong and they took carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and using the sunlight and carbon dioxide they prepared their own food and they became stronger and stronger when they became stronger and stronger they too multiplied they too had children now the ocean was getting crowded too many children on the surface hello bm was there at the bottom the green cells were there and then there was no place for the other cells to live so slowly slowly these green cells started creeping up onto land and as they entered land they stuck together they became friends they started living together and they started growing bigger and bigger and bigger till they became huge trees that you see on the surface of the earth today and they still used even after coming onto the land they still used only the red light and the blue light from the sun like they did at the bottom of the ocean now because they used red light and blue light to get their energy and gave out the green color they appeared green just like they did when they were at the bottom of the ocean and here also the red and blue lights were captured by the magical box called chlorophyll that was inside their leaves and still they used carbon dioxide and sunlight to prepare food and that was glucose and then they became huge green trees that we see today that is why trees appear green they appear green because the first born cell hello 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 bacterium hello bm took away all the green color and left out only the red and blue color now all the other creatures cannot die because they do not have green color they live and living is most important so they took up the red and blue color and they left out the green color for the hello bm and because they left out the green they appeared green and from those green cells because the trees were born the trees appear green simple but sometimes sometimes you know when you go out to a park or when you go to a botanical garden do you also see certain plants which have dark colored leaves purple 
and some crotons in your garden which are deep violet. So why is it that some plants are differently colored? They have darker leaves. They have darker leaves because in those plants, there is more of a different magic box called anthocyanin or carotenoids. Because they have different magical boxes in large number and not chlorophyll, they appear purple or pinkish, anthocyanins and carotenoids. If chlorophyll is more, they appear green. Now all this chlorophyll, whatever will be the magic box, chlorophyll or anthocyanin or carotenoid, they are all equally good at taking in the red end, um, blue light. But then in dim lights, when the sunlight is not so very good, chlorophyll is the strongest in capturing the energy. And therefore, all plants are green. That's the end of the story. Thank you. That was nice, Rohini. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. My pleasure. It was nice having you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Great. Now let's have the third story. This story is by Sheikh Bushra Parveen. You know, you can call her Apa or Didi because she's just entered college and she's doing her arts course. She loves writing and reading stories in Urdu and Hindi. And she enjoys composing poems in Urdu and sometimes in Hindi also. She's going to talk to you about a story she has written, Beti. Over to you, Bushra. मेरा नाम बुशरा है आज मैं आप तमाम को एक कहानी कहने जा रही हूँ जिसका उन्वान है फैसला फैसला जिंदगी फैसलों का नाम है सही गलत फैसलों का नाम है कई दफ़ा ऐसा होता है कि हम कोई फैसला लेते हैं और उसके लेने के बाद हमको कई सारी बातें सुनने को मिलती हैं कि ये फैसला गलत था कई दफ़ा ऐसा होता है कि हम कोई फैसला लेते हैं और हमको ये सुनने में मिलता है कि वह फैसला बहुत सही था खैर ये सब होता है हालात पर मुनसर मैं आपको आज एक ऐसी कहानी बोलने जा रही हूँ जिसमें एक लड़की की ज़िंदगी पर मुनसर ये कहानी है और उसका फ़ैसला क्या होना चाहिए था क्या उसने सही फैसला लिया या गलत फैसला लिया ये मैं नहीं जानती ये आपको कहना है कि उसका फ़ैसला सही था या गलत था कहानी का अनुमान जिस तरह से है फैसला चलिए हम कहानी की स्टार्ट करते हैं कहानी की शुरुआत करते हैं कहानी है एक ऐसी लड़की की जिसका नाम है नाज जितना प्यारा उसका नाम है उतनी ही प्यारी वो लड़की भी थी अपने वालदेन की इकलौती लड़की घर में हर कोई उसे बहुत चाहते थे उसके दो छोटे भाई थे कामरान और अन नास को पढ़ाई इसमें बहुत दिलचस्पी थी वो पढ़ना चाहती थी वो आगे बढ़ना चाहती थी हर काम में माहिर थी घर के काम बोलो या फिर पढ़ाई हर काम में वो अपना बेस्ट देती थी और ज़िंदगी से बहुत खुश थी बहुत सारे ख्वाब उसने देखे थे बहुत सारे ख्वाहिशात थे लेकिन कुछ ऐसा हुआ कि उसके माँ बाप के जो माशी हालत थे वो ठीक नहीं थे फाइनेंशली वो लोग इतने इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं थे कि नास की हर ख्वाहिश को पूरी कर सके लिहाजा वो उन्होंने एक काम किया नास को अपने नानी के घर पर भेज दिया नास का बचपन वही गुजरा नाना नानी के घर पर लेकिन वो वहाँ पर भी इस तरह से रहती थी जैसे वो घर की इकलौती बेटी है जैसे खुद के घर में रहती थी वैसे ही नाना नानी के पास नाना नानी भी उसे बहुत चाहते थे उसकी हर ख्वाहिश पूरी करते थे उसकी पढ़ाई पर उसके ख्वाहिशात पर पूरी तोज्जा देते थे और उसे पूरी आज़ादी देते थे ज़िंदगी जीने की नास के कोई नास को पढ़ाई का बहुत शौक़ था वो पढ़ने के लिए रोज़ाना स्कूल जाती थी घर पर आती थी घर कर काम करती थी नाना नानी का दिल जीतती थी हंसी मजाक हंसी तो जैसे उसकी आदत थी उसकी पहचान बन गई थी उसकी हंसी बहुत प्यारी हंसी थी नाना नानी के घर के सामने एक ऐसा एक लोग रहते थे उसके नाना के दोस्त थे दरअसल वो उन्हें भी नाज की आदत बहुत पसंद थी वक्त गुजरता गया देखते देखते नाज सत्रह साल की हो गई जैसे ही सत्रह साल की हो गई नाना नानी को ख्याल आया 
کہ اب اس کی شادی کر دینی چاہیے یہ نانا نانی یہ خیال میں ہی تھے لیکن اس کے ساتھ ساتھ کیا ہوا نانا کے ایک دوست تھے جو کہ ناس کے نانا کے گھر کے پڑوسی تھے پڑوسیوں نے ناس کو پسند کر لیا اور ان کے نانا کے دوست نے ناس کے لیے رشتہ اپنے بیٹے حماد کے لیے ناس کا ہاتھ مانگ لیا نانا کو بھی وہ لڑکا بہت پسند تھا لہٰذا ماں باپ کی پرمیشن سے ماں باپ کی اجازت سے ناس کی شادی حماد کے ساتھ محض سترہ برس کی عمر میں ہو گئی شادی ہونے کے بعد ناز نے اپنے تمام خواہشات کو روک دیا کیونکہ وہ چاہتی تھی وہ اپنا تمام وقت تمام تر وقت اپنے سسرال والوں کو دے اپنے شوہر کو دے ان کی خدمت کرے ان کے ساتھ اچھا رہے حماد بھی بہت اچھا لڑکا تھا حماد ناز کو بہت چاہتا تھا اس کی ہر خواہش پوری کرتا تھا ایک سال کے اندر ہی ان کے پاس ایک بیٹی ہوئی ناز اور حماد کی بیٹی جس کا نام انہوں نے آنیا رکھا آنیا بہت پیاری بچی تھی ناز ہی کی طرح وہ لوگ چاہتے تھے آنیا کی ہر خواہش پوری ہو ہر خواہش پوری ہو لہٰذا وہ لوگ ہر ہر وہ کام کرنے لگے جس کی وجہ سے آنیا کو خوشی محسوس ہو سکے وقت گزرتا رہا جیسے جیسے وقت گزرا ان کے دل میں خیال آیا کہ وہ کیا کریں آنیا کی ہر خواہش کو پورا کرتے رہیں چاہے وہ جو بھی خواہش کرے وہ اسے پورا کرنا چاہتے تھے کبھی اسے روکنا نہیں چاہتے تھے آنیا کی خواہشات کو پورا کرنے کے لیے ہر وہ ممکن کام کرتے تھے وقت گزرتا گیا اور آنیا دو سال کی ہو گئی ان دو سالوں میں ان کے یہاں ایک دوسری بیٹی ہوئی آئزا یہ بھی لڑکی بہت پیاری تھی لیکن پھر سے بیٹی ہوئی بیٹی سنتے سننے میں بیٹی جتنا پیارا اور اچھا نام دکھتا ہے جتنا ایزی اور آسان لفظ دکھتا ہے شاید بیٹی بن کر جینا اتنا ہی مشکل ہے کیونکہ ایک بیٹی کی زندگی میں ایسے ادوار آتے ہیں وہ ایک ایسی زندگی گزار گزارتی ہے جو شاید ایک لڑکا یا ایک مرد کبھی نہیں سوچ سکتا پہلے وہ ایک بیٹی بن کر ایک گھر میں جنم لیتی ہے اپنے ماں باپ کے نام تمام زندگی کر دیتی ہے ان کی ہر خواہش پوری کرتی ہے ماں باپ کی عزت ہوتی ہے ماں باپ کا فخر ہوتا ہے اس کا دوسرا دور ہوتا ہے بیوی بن کر جینا جب وہ بیوی بنتی ہے اپنے شوہر کے نام اپنی تمام زندگی کر دیتی ہے شوہر کی عزت بن جاتی ہے شوہر کی مرضی سے زندگی جیتی ہے پھر ایک دور آتا ہے جب وہ ماں بنتی ہے ماں جب ماں بنتی ہے ہر خواہش ہر ہر خواہش اپنی خواہشات کو ترک کر کے اس کی ہر خواہش صرف یہ ہوتی ہے کہ اس کی اولاد کی خواہشیں پوری ہو اور اس طرح سے وہ اپنی پوری زندگی گزارتی ہے خیر جب ان کے یہاں دوسری بیٹی ہوئی آئزا تب بھی وہ لوگ بہت خوش تھے لیکن حماد کے دل میں ایک خوف تھا ایک ڈر تھا جو دھیرے دھیرے بڑھ رہا تھا وہ یہ تھا کہ کہیں میں اپنی بیٹیوں کے خواہشات کو پورا نہ کر سکوں کہ میں جتنا کماتا ہوں اتنے میں وہ میری بیٹیاں خوش نہیں رہیں گے میری بیوی خوش نہیں رہیں گی لہٰذا وہ دھیرے 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 غیر قانونی کاموں کی طرف متوجہ ہوتا گیا اپنی زندگی سے بہت سارے راز تھے جو وہ اپنی بیوی سے چھپانے لگا لیکن اس کی خبر ناس کو نہیں تھی وہ اپنے شوہر پر بہت بھروسہ کرتی تھی ایک دن ایسا آیا حماد نے اچانک فیصلہ کر لیا کہ وہ انڈیا میں نہیں رہ سکتا اور اس نے کہا کہ میں کیا کہوں گا میں باہر چلا جاؤں گا سعودی چلا جاؤں گا یا دبائی چلا جاؤں گا لیکن انڈیا میں رہ کر کمانا میرے لیے اب مشکل ہے لہٰذا ناس کے بہت منع کرنے کے باوجود بھی حماد انڈیا چھوڑ کر دبائی چلا گیا دبائی جانے کے بعد اس کی جتنی انکم تھی وہ اس سے بھی کبھی مطمئن نہیں ہوا وہ اور کمانا چاہتا تھا پیسوں کی لالچ اس کے دل میں آتی گئی وہ جتنا کماتا تھا اس اتنے سے زیادہ کمانے کی کوشش کرنے لگا لہٰذا غیر قانونی کام کرتے کرتے وہ اتنا بڑھ گیا کہ وہ دوبارہ انڈیا واپس آنا نہیں چاہتا تھا اب وہ غیر قانونی کاموں میں حصل چیز یہ ہے کہ وہ غیر قانونی کاموں میں اتنا بڑھ گیا اتنا بڑھ گیا کہ اسے ایک پارٹنر کی ضرورت تھی لیڈی پارٹنر کی جو اس کی مدد کر سکے ان غیر قانونی کاموں میں لہٰذا ایک دن اس نے ناس کے سامنے کہا کہ مجھے ایسا ایسا کام کرنا ہے اور اس کے لیے مجھے آپ کی ضرورت ہے آپ میری مدد کیجیے لیکن ناز ایسے غیر قانونی کاموں سے پیسہ نہیں کمانا چاہتی تھی لہٰذا اس نے حماد کو منع کر دیا حماد کو منع کر دیا لیکن یہ جو منع کرنا تھا حماد یہاں پر نہیں رکنے والا تھا اس کے دل میں لالچ آ گئی تھی اس کے دل میں پیسوں کی لالچ تھی وہ غیر قانونی کاموں میں اتنا مشغول ہو گیا تھا کہ وہ زندگی کے حقیقت سے خدا کے خوف سے دور ہو گیا تھا لہٰذا ایک دن اس نے کانٹریکٹ میرج کر لی کسی اور عورت کے ساتھ ایک ایسی عورت جسے جو کہ ان کاموں میں بہت ماہر تھی جس کے دل میں کہتے ہیں نا دل نہیں پتھر تھا وہ ویسی عورت تھی وہ ہر غیر قانونی کام جانتی تھی بہت ماہر تھی 
दोनों ने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मैरिज कर ली दोनों ने दोनों में ये तय हो गया कि वो ये बात नाश तक जाने नहीं देंगे कि उन्होंने शादी कर ली है लेकिन एक दफ़ा ऐसा हुआ दोनों में शायद कुछ बहस हो गई या लड़ाई हो गई पता नहीं क्या हुआ और वो औरत डायरेक्टली आ गई नाश के घर पर और उसे कह दिया कि मैं तुम्हारे शोहर की दूसरी बीवी हूँ एक दिन जब वो अचानक से घर पर आई और कहा कि मैं तुम्हारे शोहर की दूसरी बीवी हूँ लेकिन इस बात पर नाज ने खास ध्यान नहीं दिया वो समझ रही थी शायद कुछ बिजनेस में ऊंच नीच हो गई है जिसकी वजह से ये औरत मेरे शोहर पर ऐसे इल्ज़ाम लगा रही है लिहाजा उसने यकीन नहीं किया और अपनी आम जिंदगी जीती रही अब पता चला तीसरी बार कि तीसरी उनके यहाँ एक बेटी हुई फिर से बेटी हुई तीसरी बेटी तीसरी बेटी होने के बाद हमाद का वो खौफ बहुत बढ़ गया बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ गया इस हद तक बढ़ गया कि वो गैर कानूनी कामों से कभी वापस आना ही नहीं चाहता था इस दफ़ा ये हुआ उसने नाज से कहा कि हम तमाम लोग सऊदी चले जाते हैं वहाँ पर शिफ्ट हो जाते हैं और वहाँ पर अपनी ज़िंदगी गुजारेंगे अपने बच्चों की हर ख्वाहिश पूरी करेंगे लेकिन नाज इस पर तैयार नहीं थी इस दफ़ा ये हुआ वो औरत के जज्बात इतने बढ़ गए कि वो घर तक आने लगी सबूत बताने लगी जिसकी वजह से ये जाहिर हो गया और हमाद ने भी कबूल कर लिया कि वो उसकी दूसरी बीवी है जब हमाद का ये कबूल करना था नाज ये सदमा बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकी और उसने सुसाइड करने की कोशिश कर ली जाहिर है हर कोई करेगा अचानक किसी दिन कोई औरत आती है कहती है मैं तुम्हारे शोहर की दूसरी बीवी हूँ आपके शोहर ने आपको धोखा दिया है कोई भी बर्दाश्त नहीं करेगा नाज ने भी बर्दाश्त नहीं किया और बग़ैर कुछ सोचे समझे अपनी जान लेने की कोशिश कर ली लेकिन पता नहीं खुदा को क्या मंजूर था वो बच गई वो ज़िंदा रही लेकिन ज़िंदा रहने के बावजूद उसके तमाम ख्वाहिशा तर्क हो चुके थे किसी पर भरोसा नहीं करती थी वो कहती थी जब मेरा शोहर ही मुझे धोखा देता है मुझे दुनिया में किसी पर भरोसा नहीं है मुझे रब पर भी भरोसा नहीं है इतना टूट गई थी इतना गमजदा हो गई थी लेकिन जब भी वो अपने बच्चों को देखती अब इसके दिल में ये खौफ होता कि ये बच्चों का क्या होगा वह अपने बच्चों को देखने लगी बच्चों को सोचने लगी फिर एक दिन ऐसा हुआ नास को ख्याल आया कि कब तक मैं ऐसे जी हूँ जब भी वो किसी के सामने ये बात कहती जैसे कि उसके भाई थे कामरान इमरान कामरान और आयान कामरान कहता था कि अब यही ज़िंदगी है तुझे ऐसे ही जीना पड़ेगा उसे कबूल कर ले वो औरत को कबूल कर ले इलीगल कामों में है तेरा शोहर और तू कुछ नहीं कर सकती इस तरह से बातें उसे सुनने में मिलते थे और जो आयान था वो कहता था ज़िंदगी बहुत बड़ी है अपने शोहर को भूल जाओ उसे तलाक दे दो आगे बढ़ जाओ नास के पास दो रास्ते थे या तो वो वही ज़िंदगी जिए या फिर अपने शोहर को छोड़ दे और एक नई ज़िंदगी की शुरुआत करे बहुत मुश्किल होता है ऐसे फैसले लेना हम सिर्फ शायद छोटे से छोटा फैसला लेने में भी कंफ्यूज हो जाते हैं आई थिंक एक मिसाल अगर मैं आपको दूँ जब हम शॉपिंग करने जाते हैं दो ड्रेस पसंद आते हैं हमको ज़्यादातर सबके साथ होता है ऐसा दो ड्रेस जब पसंद आते हैं वो फैसला नहीं कर सकते कि हमको ये ड्रेस चाहिए या ये ड्रेस चाहिए बहुत दफ़ा सोचते हैं एक से चार दो लोगों को पूछते हैं मम्मी को पूछते हैं या फिर अपने फ्रेंड्स को पूछते हैं बहुत पूछ पूछ के जब लास्ट में हमारा दिल गवारा देता है या तो हम अगर औकात है तो दोनों ड्रेस खरीद लेंगे या फिर जो एक जो ज़्यादा पसंद आ रहा है वो खरीद ले लेंगे खैर ये मिसाल मैंने इसलिए दी ताकि आप समझ सके कि एक छोटी सी ड्रेस के मामले में हम इतना सोचते हैं लेकिन यहाँ तो मामला है पूरी ज़िंदगी का नास को सिर्फ कामरान और आयान की बातें घूम रही थी कामरान और आयान एक नहीं थे हज़ार मुँह हज़ार बातें थोड़े लोग कहते थे ज़िंदगी यही है इसी का नाम है जो है वो कबूल कर लो और ज़िंदगी गुजारो थोड़े लोग कहते थे नहीं ज़िंदगी इसका नाम नहीं है तुम्हें पूरा हक़ है अपनी ज़िंदगी जीने का और तुम वो शोहर के बगैर भी ज़िंदगी गुजार सकती हो घर में बैठे बैठे नाज अक्सर बोल हो जाया करती थी सिर्फ यही बातें यही ख्याल यही सब फिर से सुसाइड करने की कोशिश करती फिर अपने बच्चों को देखती फिर बोलती कि इनका क्या होगा खैर ये बातों से इतनी डिप्रेस हो गई बहुत ज़्यादा डिप्रेस हो गई नास की एक दोस्त थी उसने उससे कहा कि भाई आप एक काम करो कि घर में मत रहो घर में रहने से आपको ज़्यादातर ऐसे ख्याल आता रहे लिहाजा कोई एक क्लास ज्वाइन कर लो कंप्यूटर क्लासेस ज्वाइन कर लो या फिर कुछ और क्लासेस ज्वाइन कर लो तुम पहले भी तो करती थी अभी भी तो करो लिहाजा नाज ने नाज घर के बाहर निकल गई उसने ब्यूटिशन कोर्स सीखा इतनी परफेक्ट थी उसे मेकअप का बहुत शौक था लेकिन अपने शादी होने की वजह से वो अपने स्किल्स को बाहर नहीं ला सकी थी लेकिन इस दफ़ा उसे मौका मिला वो इतनी मशगूल हो गई अपने कामों में इतनी माहिर हो गई 
कि एक दिन उसने ब्यूटी पार्लर डाल लिया ब्यूटी पार्लर डालने के बाद वो खुद से कमाने लगी अब उसके दिल में ये डर भी नहीं था कि मैं अपने शौहर को छोड़ दूँ तो क्या होगा मैं फाइनेंशियली अपने बच्चों को सपोर्ट कर सकूँगी या नहीं कर सकूँगी लिहाजा उसने क्या किया ब्यूटी पार्लर डाल दिया अब तक उसने तलाक नहीं दी थी लेकिन जब ब्यूटी पार्लर डाला उसके पास एक सपोर्ट आया उसके पास एक हुनर आया वो अपने बच्चों को लेकर अलग हो गई और हम से कह दिया कि मैं आपको छोड़ रही हूँ इस दफ़ा हम को बहुत बुरा लगा उसे ऐसा दिया दिखा कि वो अपने वाइफ से धोखा खा चुका है लेकिन ऐसा नहीं था हमाद नास को नहीं छोड़ना चाहता था लेकिन वो नास के साथ साथ अपने गैर कानूनी कामों को भी नहीं छोड़ना चाहता था पैसों की लालच में इतना गिर गया था कि हर वो गैर कानूनी काम करने को तैयार था कि किसी की इज्जत की तक ख्याल नहीं करता था लिहाजा एक दिन ऐसा हुआ हमाद और नाज में बहुत बहस हुई बहुत लड़ाई हुई और नाज ने तमाम रिपोर्ट तमाम बातें पुलिस स्टेशन में बता दी कंप्लेंट कर दी उस औरत के भी खिलाफ और हमाद के भी खिलाफ और हमाद को जेल करा दी हमाद को ऐसा लगता था कि नास कभी मेरे राजों के बारे में नहीं कहेगी कभी इतनी उसमें इतनी हिम्मत नहीं आएगी कि वो आगे बढ़े और मेरे खिलाफ जाए लेकिन नाज ने यह काम किया और हमाद को और उस औरत को जेल करवाई जेल करवाने के बाद अब नास का ये फैसला है कि वो अपने तीन बेटियों के साथ अपने ब्यूटी पार्लर के साथ वो खुश रहेगी जब भी लोग उसे कहते हैं दूसरी शादी करने के लिए वो कहती है नहीं मैं दूसरी शादी नहीं करूँगी मेरे में इतनी काबिलियत है कि मैं अपने बेटियों को अच्छे से पाल सकती हूँ मैं क्या कर सकती हूँ अपने कानूनी तरीके से कमा सकती हूँ हक से कमा सकती हूँ और वो अपने बेटियों के साथ रहती है उसके बेटियाँ भी बहुत खुश हैं आज वो एक अलग ज़िंदगी जी रही है उसके पास दो फैसले थे अगर वो वही ज़िंदगी गुजारने की कोशिश करती तो शायद आज भी लड़ाई होती या फिर मारपीट होती पता नहीं क्या होता लेकिन आज वो आज़ाद है और सिर्फ आप तमाम को ये बात कहना चाहती है कि ज़िंदगी के फैसले खुद लेना सीखो छोटे बड़े ज़िंदगी में बहुत सारे दौर ऐसे आते हैं जब हमको फैसले लेना पड़ता है लेकिन अपने फैसले खुद लो थोड़ी सी हिम्मत दिखाओ थोड़ी सी हिम्मत दिखाने से पूरी ज़िंदगी बदल जाती है अब आप लोगों को कहना है कि ये फैसला इसका कैसा था क्या उसे वही ज़िंदगी गुजारनी चाहिए थी या फिर उसका फैसला सही था ये था उसका फैसला थैंक यू थैंक यू बुश्रा शुक्रिया आपका अच्छा अच्छी कहानी सुनाइए बेटा आप ऐसे ही लेखते रहना और बार बार सुना सुनाते रहना ये छोड़ना नहीं थैंक यू एवरी वन वी हैव दिस स्टोरी टेलिंग सेशन ऑफ थ्री स्टोरीज यू हैड अ डॉग स्टोरी यू हैड अ साइंस स्टोरी एंड यू हैड अ गर्ल्स डिटर्मिनेशन स्टोरी टूमोरो अगेन वी हैव अनादर सेशन ऑफ स्टोरी टेलिंग विद थ्री मोर स्टोरीज प्लीज डू ट्यून इन टूमोरो एज वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच गन्ने लगी वंगी फूले रंग को